Okay, so for this video, I wanted to talk about how to report your gambling winnings and losses on your Form 1040 tax return. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to go through a, a Form W2G example. I've also got um, a sample Form 1040 where I'll show you how this actually gets reported on the return on the 1040 on Schedule 1 on Schedule A. And then I got a simple fact pattern in front of us that we're going to use to build out the return. So just to start with high level, U.S. taxpayers are required to report gross income from whatever source derived. So if you win money gambling, that is gross income. That must be reported on your tax return. You must pay taxes on it. Um, and so that's the kind of the short answer that people don't like to hear, but it's the truth. Now, if you gamble regularly, you report all your gambling winnings, but you can also report gambling losses to the extent of your winnings. So what that means is if you have gambling winnings, you can report the losses to offset those winnings. You can never report more losses than you have winnings, right? So you can't take a net gambling loss, uh, but at least you're able to offset the two. Um, so you're not paying tax on just the gains. You get to offset the losses that you might incur as well. Now, a, a little unique uh, nuance to that rule, though, however, is for individual taxpayers, you can only report the losses if you itemize deductions. So uh, I'm going to go over those rules. We're going to look at this example first. And I'm going to show you how that kind of works. So in our example here, we have John Doe. He's doing his 1040 and he, he gambles a lot using slots, right? So he's a slot machine guy. And during 2021, he had a large payout um, of 15,700. And uh, for those of you that go to the casinos, you'll notice that if you win a lot of money, they don't just pay you out right then and there. They've got to pay you out um, at, the, at the window and they give you um, a, a 1099 or a W2G to report the winnings, right? They're obligated to do that under federal tax law. So John gets his payout, but he also is gonna be issued a, a W2G, which shows the amount of the payout, 15,700, and the casino is taking out withholding taxes of $3,768. So John's gonna use this W2G to prepare his tax return. So W2G, it might look something like this, right? The payer is gonna be the casino. You're gonna have the tax ID information, the winner's name, and then the reportable amount of winnings, the date he won, the type of the wager, the taxes withheld, if any, um, and then some ID information on the winner, right? So tax ID number, driver's license identification number, all that kind of stuff gets collected at the window and it's ultimately reported on your WTG and sent to the IRS, okay? So now, go back to the slide here really quickly. Um, so John, um, he, so he does have these winnings, but he also keeps a ledger showing all of his winnings and losses, and he does have losses of 18,600 for the year. Okay, so overall he's in the hole, right? He, he had a big payout, but overall he's lost a significant amount of money to exceed the losses. So what he wants to be able to do here is report the winnings, report the losses, and try to you know, make this a wash, right? So he's not having to pay any taxes. So. U.S. taxpayers report their gambling winnings, those gross winnings, are on Schedule 1 of Form 1040. And then, as I noted earlier, if you're a U.S. taxpayer, you can deduct the gambling losses as an itemized deduction on Schedule A, but those losses can never exceed the gross amount of winnings reported. Okay, so let's look at the 1040 and kind of show how some of these numbers uh, um, you know, end up on there. So we've got a 1040 here for John Doe. Um, obviously, he's got some other, he's got his, some other income, his wages, some investment income, capital gains. But what we're going to focus on here, the unique piece, is how to report these gambling winnings uh, and losses and the federal tax withheld by the casino. So if I go down to Schedule 1 here, this is where you report the gross amount of gambling winnings. So Schedule 1, additional income and adjustments. If we go down to Line 8B, we have gambling income. This is where you see us report that 15,700, the gambling winnings from the W2G, okay? So you report the gambling winnings here. Now, if you had any federal income tax withheld on the W2G or on a 1099, so if I go back to the W2G really quickly, you see the reported winnings of 15,007, 
And then in box four, we've got federal income tax withheld of 3,768. So where does that number live? If I go back to the tax return, page two of the form 1040, if we go into lines 25, federal income tax withheld, you report the tax withheld from the W2G on line C. So 25C, other forms, there's that number, 3,768. So that's how John gets credit for the amount of federal income tax withheld from his lottery winnings, right? His, his slot machine winnings from the casino. Okay, so that's that W2G part. Now, how do we report the losses to offset those gains? Well, recall that in our fact pattern here, um, John had 18,600 of losses. Now, when you're a US taxpayer, an individual, you report the gambling losses as an itemized deduction on Schedule A, but the amount of the deduction cannot exceed the losses. So if we look uh, at Schedule A here, let's go to the 1040, scroll past Schedule 1, go down to Schedule A, itemized deduction. So um, if you're a taxpayer and you have other itemized deductions, obviously these will all be completed. You might have mortgage interest, real estate taxes, maybe some medical expenses. But in this case, John has no other itemized deductions really other than his gambling losses. And so gambling losses are reported down here in line 16, other itemized deductions. So these are other, I other itemized deductions. They're not subject to an AGI floor. Okay, so what that means is any amount that you put down there is deductible so long as you can itemize. Um, so in this case, John reports gambling losses. Now notice here, we're not reporting that $18,000 number. We're only reporting the amount um, to the extent of gambling winnings. So the extra gambling losses that he had for the year, unfortunately, those are just lost, or you can't really do anything with them, but you can report losses to the extent of the winnings. So we've got gambling losses there of 15,700. And so that number is included in his total itemized deduction figure of 16,465. And so ultimately what we're gonna see is that number is flowing through to page one of the form 1040. And we have here, right, um, standard or itemized deduction on line 12A. We have that 16,465 number. So that number includes the gambling losses. So even though we have his gambling winnings here on line eight, 15,700, within this 12A number, we have 15,700 of gambling losses. So those two more or less offset, right? Um, so that is how you report the gambling winnings and the losses. Now, just to be clear, if we look at Schedule 1 here for gambling winnings, this does not just include items reported to you on W2G or 1099. If you have other gambling winnings that are not reported to you on those forms, you still have to report those totals here, right? So you report the total of your gambling winnings there, and then you report the total of your gambling losses on Schedule A to the extent that they uh, match up with gambling income. Um, if you've got more losses than income, obviously those are lost. If you have losses that are lower than your gambling income, well, that means you are gonna be paying some tax on your net gambling uh, earnings because you have some positive profits for the year. Okay, so uh, that covers it for gambling income and loss reporting on the 1040. I uh, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.